We begin with fast-moving developments out of Bangladesh. The army chief is due to address the nation this hour at a time of widespread unrest and deaths. On Sunday, at least 97 people were killed during violence between government supporters and those who want her out. Students are marching on the capital, Dhaka, to demand justice for 300 people killed since last month. An indefinite curfew has been put in place, the internet has been cut off and offices and factories closed. Students began protesting last month when a controversial job quota system that favoured children of war veterans was reinstated by the High Court. Now, that has since been scaled down by the country's top court. Well, for the latest, we're going to go now to Tanvir, who is live for us in Dakar. And Tanvir, we're getting reports that there's actually a possibility that Hasina might resign. What are you hearing there? Well... You can see behind me, maybe the, not the whole crowd, the entire city is out on the street. The speculation and the rumor is that she has left the country. We cannot independently verify anything like that. The army chief was supposed to give a televised speech at 2 p.m. local time, which is 8 GMT, but he postponed it till 3 p.m., which is 9 GMT. We'll know more details then, but nothing officially announced. But everybody in the streets, every corner of the city, Thousands of people are out. We are near to the Shabar Square, which is the epic center of student protest. There is, I don't know the number of people. It's just, un, I've never seen anything like that in the capital city of protest. Tens of thousands of mostly students, public, you know, even family people with the children out celebrating. Practically, they've taken for sure that she has either left the country, resigned, or she may soon be leaving. And the government most likely is in a fallen or step down and the army will decide what's the next step probably an interim government with the caretaker type government for the interim period we'll know more in details mm. maybe after 9 gmt local time yeah, indeed. but at this point the main story is the celebration your yeah, tempted oh, sorry to interrupt as you say we're waiting for uh, the Army Chief to speak uh, shortly, any time now. Can you just give us an idea of how crucial uh, the Army is, actually, for Hasina to stay in power? If she loses them, does she lose the Prime Ministership? Historically very crucial, because the Army had played a role in... in I'm sorry, this, people are excited here. Guys, please, I know you're excited. Historically, army played role in the politics of Bangladesh. People generally love the army. They think they're a neutral body in times of crisis. They can handle situation. In a, what we saw in the past several weeks, the violence and everything, they have confidence on the army that can manage the situation. And the army doesn't want to be the enemy of the people. And that's why people have confidence the army will control the situation in a neutral and proper manner. Every lives will be saved, properties will be saved. So this is what they're saying. In just about an hour ago, the students were hanging out flowers to the troops, the military troops. You know, about four hours back, the police were still cracking down on students in the university campuses. They're firing rounds. You know, people were injured. You know, some probably fatally, but that all thing is over and people are relieved that this brutal crackdown for the past several weeks is finally over and that they can look for a new future. Yeah, Tanvir, are you mentioning that just the change in the last few hours from uh, the army and police shooting uh, at protesters and now we see yes. these protesters, even though there is still a curfew in place, there on the streets that they've come out in force and, as you say, are, are, are celebrating before we've had any formal announcement from either the army or the prime minister. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of surprised me. People heard rumours, people heard all kind of stories and the fact that the army chief was, which very rarely happens, going to address the nation, they knew some sort of changes are in the foreground. And because a lot of students started coming to the Shabak Square, the army didn't interfere. Rather, they allowed them to gather and were embracing the students when they handed out the flowers. That gave the signal that something must have happened because they're not doing anything, but the police left the area. You don't see hardly any police in the city. You know, it's mostly army or nothing at all. It's mostly taken over by the general population, the students, and everyone is out in the street. 
but it is still based on speculation. We cannot independently confirm anything that happened behind the scene, what's going on behind in the government sector, but it is likely something major has happened, otherwise you don't see what's going on. And we won't know till the army address and there's some official announcement. Yes, thanks so much, uh, Tanvir. We're waiting for the army chief to speak uh, any minute now. That's Tanvir Chowdhury on the streets of Dakar for us. We're going to stay with this story and go to Mubasha Hassan, who is a political analyst and author of Narratives of Bangladesh. He's joining us live from Sydney. Thanks very much for being with us. First of all, what do you make of just the change that we have seen in the last few hours from authorities shooting at protesters to now protesters clearly out in numbers on the streets celebrating before we've heard really any decision so far? So I, th I think this is, I think Sheikh Hasina, uh, it's most likely that she is going to resign if she is not already resigned. Um, the internet was shut down and then restored and there was not uh, any repression on the protesters. So this all indicates that it is a win for the protesters and democracy mm. in Bangladesh. It is an incredible amount of uh, happiness all across the world because a tyrant has been fallen. As you say, in your words, a tyrant has fallen. I mean, just how significant would her resignation be? Just how unprecedented is this for Bangladesh? It, we haven't heard this level of repression. We haven't faced this level of human rights violation in Bangladeshi, Bangladeshi history by any prime minister. So to give you some context, from 2009 to 2022, about 2,500 Bangladeshis are extrajudicially killed. Over 500 Bangladeshis are forced, were forcefully disappeared. And in just few last few weeks, Probably over 1,000 people are dead. So it is a significant watershed moment in Bangladesh as a history. And you'll see once this news will break out, there will, there will be happiness all around the country. As our, uh, as our correspondent alluded to, an interim government uh, is likely uh, to be introduced here. How soon could we expect elections for a new democratic administration? And I guess how important will that be for the protesters that have uh, taken to the streets? So I think whoever is going to come into the power, they would need to um, do some reconciliation process and make sure that there is a free and fair elections. Otherwise, this protester will take the streets again. And we, what we have learned from past few weeks, that these protesters are very conscious. They're very democratically conscious and they appreciate freedom and they don't, they don't worry to put their life on the line for freedom and democracy. And it is an incredible generation and extraordinary future, I hope, mm. are waiting for Bangladesh. Uh, this started as a student movement, a student protest, but it very quickly spread to encompass so many more different uh, people from different walks of life uh, than just students. Uh, were you surprised by that? And was that the difference uh, between uh, what we saw uh, three or four weeks ago when the first protesters took to the streets and what is happening now? So, um, you know, I have studied authoritarianism in Bangladesh for many years. Recently, we published a research called Democratic Bricolage, where we saw that even Sheikh Hasina established and creeping authoritarianism over the country, citizens were resisting. But I think Sheikh Hasina crossed lines in the past few weeks by killing, so, you know, by ordering shoot to kill people. And there's so many deaths, young, young students. And that kind of like crossing the red line and that angered everyone in Bangladesh who took the streets. So A, I was not surprised because I was always knowing that there's the democratic resilience, the spirit of democratic resilience in Bangladesh is always there. But I was surprised how courageous they all are to took the street and put their lines, put their lives on the lines for what they believe and that is the um, resignation of this um, of Sheikh Hasina.
Well, thank you so much for your, your time and analysis, uh, Mubasha Hassan. We appreciate it and are keeping a very close eye on when the Bangladesh Army Chief uh, speaks, and we'll bring that to you when he does. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get latest news from Al Jazeera.